Happy St. Patrick's Day, and thank you for joining the people of St. Paul's United Methodist Church for these video highlights of our worship service. My name is Amy Jo Burr, and I'm the pastor of St. Paul's. I invite you to join me in prayer as we begin today. And our opening prayer is attributed to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the inspiration of Jesus the Christ, and grant that we will love Thee with all of our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. And we ask Thee, O oh God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and in our lying down, in our moments of joy and in our moments of sorrow, until the day when there shall be no sunset and no dawning. Amen. Please join me in the singing of the hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Words will appear on the screen so you can join in with the singing. There's a wideness in God's mercy Like the wideness of the sea there's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. Our first scripture reading today comes from Proverbs 25, verses 21 through 22. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. And if they are thirsty, give them water to drink, for you will heap coals of fire on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. A second scripture reading from Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our United Methodist tradition, we customarily look to four sources to help us draw closer to God and grow in our faith. Those four sources are scripture, which is primary, tradition, experience, and reason. Now, when we consider how experience helps to shape our faith, we think first of our own experiences of faith with God and a life lived in daily discipleship. And also we think of the experiences of others, the uplifting stories that we learn by Christian conferencing and sharing our daily stories of Christianity with each other. We also think of stories that are passed down through the generations. And today we're looking at one of those stories as we consider our two scripture readings. Today we're looking at the hagiography of St. Patrick. Now, when we look at a hagiography, this is different from a regular biography. It is not as much interested in exact facts or details of the person's biography. It's uh, an idealized version of the person's life, which helps us remember some of their better qualities, how they related to God, 
and helps us to also grow in our faith by sharing in the story. So I tell you that uh, St. Patrick was a fifth century saint. He lived many years ago. Some of the details of this story um, are kind of hard to gather, but some of the inspirational themes that come out of this story really help us to relate to our two scriptures today. So let's consider the stories that we've learned about the life of St. Patrick. As I said, St. Patrick was a fifth century saint. He was born in England. Does that surprise you? It surprised me. So how did he come to be in Ireland? When he was 16 years old, he was kidnapped and brought to Ireland to serve as a slave. He served as a slave there for six long years. And for solace during that time, he turned to his Christian faith and an enjoyment of the outdoors. He was outdoors a lot as a slave because part of his duties in slavery included tending the sheep. In other words, for part of the slavery, he was a shepherd. Now, as I said, for solace, uh, St. Patrick turned to his Christian faith and a great enjoyment of being outdoors. And as he prayed, one night he had a vision in a dream about a boat that would rescue him. And the next morning, he ran for the harbor. He escaped from slavery, almost dying and starving to death on his way back to his family. He made it back to England and was reunited with his family. Years later, he felt a call to ministry. And unbelievably, he felt a call to return to Ireland as a missionary, where he served for many years as a missionary and eventually a bishop. He was beloved by the people because of his simple way of explaining his compassionate heart, his forgiving nature, and his love of the outdoors. He was also beloved um, by the people because his missionaries, who he sent out to work, went out together in groups, it's remembered, and got to know the people. They were relational missionaries. They got to know the people and in this way formed loving relationships with them and shared their faith. Now, St. Patrick was known to not be a very good Latin scholar. And at this time, the writings of the church were mostly written in Latin. So many of his writings are described now as scholars as being incomprehensible. But he taught many simple lessons, such as seeing the Trinity in the shape of a shamrock. And those were clearly understood and remembered through the generations. Miracles attributed to St. Patrick include driving the snakes from Ireland, this is probably mythic, but they just wanted to say, wow, he was an amazing guy. And also causing an entire herd of swine to appear when ministering to a hungry family. Now, St. Patrick is considered to be patron saint of Ireland and also of engineers because of the large number of church buildings he had constructed after he and his missionaries working with him shared their faith with so many people in Ireland. So remembering these stories about the life of St. Patrick, I am considering what lessons we might learn, what uh, inspiration and enlightenment we might find in these stories. The first one which came to me is the lesson of forgiveness. St. Patrick went back to minister to the very people who had enslaved him. Wow, what a forgiving heart. This is the difficult lesson that we learn from Christ in today's gospel reading. The scripture teaches us not to just forgive our friends who are easy to forgive, but to forgive 
our enemies too. This is the pathway of discipleship to which we are called, even if it is hard. And honestly, as far as bringing about change in the world that moves us closer to the kingdom of God, it is often our enemies who are most in need of a word of transformational hope and salvation through Jesus Christ. When we forgive our enemies, we are being godly. Our scripture says that God sends rain to water the fields of both the just and the unjust. God loves all of creation, not just the nice folks. This is the teaching from our gospel reading today. Our gospel reading includes concludes with the encouragement for us to be perfected in love. This simple call to be perfect is not about not making mistakes. It's calling us to be perfectly loving and perfectly forgiving as God is, to grow in our faith until our love is all-encompassing. Now, going back to minister to people who had enslaved me would be my last choice of what I wanted to do as a pastor. I couldn't imagine. And yet, from the story today, we learn that Christians throughout time have made these types of decisions in order to forgive their enemies and pray for those who persecute them. They have decided, instead of holding a grudge, to forgive, to grow in their faith, and to reach out with Christ's love, mercy, and forgiveness. We also should be seeking to walk this path in our own discipleship. Another lesson that I learned as I read the story of St. Patrick was to stay faithful and to turn to your faith when life becomes difficult, because life can become difficult. St. Patrick was enslaved for six years, and through that, his faith grew stronger because he turned to God in times of difficulty. There are times when our life circumstances are simply terrible, But in the midst of them, God is with us. God does not abandon us. We are not alone. And God reaches out to us in care the same way he reached out to St. Patrick with the remarkable dream that helped him to escape. This is another thing that we learn when we think about the story of St. Patrick, and that is to pay attention to God speaking to us through our prayers and through our dreams. God continues to speak to our hearts if we will only listen for that still small voice which is God speaking. And when God speaks to our hearts, he provides a description of the way that we can find salvation through him. For St. Patrick, he provides deliverance. For each of us, he guides us on that pathway that leads to new life and eternal life. Another lesson that I learned as I read through the story of St. Patrick again was thinking about these missionary teams that were sent out to serve by St. Patrick. The people remember these and pass down stories about how the missionaries took time to get to know them, to speak with them, to learn about their lives, and through the witness of these growing friendships, they taught them also about their faith. This is one of the lessons we also learned from Christ in how to do mission and evangelism. Christ stopped to talk with Zacchaeus in the tree. 
Christ stopped to talk to the woman at the well, to develop relationships with them, to go home with Zacchaeus for dinner. Christ took the time to build loving relationships, which pointed the people towards God, his heavenly father. We see this also in these fifth century missionaries led by Patrick. And remember that we too are missionaries in our own time. And like Christ and like these missionaries from these stories passed down, we also need to take time to stop and develop relationships with those around us so that our lives can witness God's presence for them. After building these relationships, sometimes we find ways that we're able to love one another better. In other words, to do good. This is a strong part of our Wesleyan tradition as one of our three general rules as Methodist is simply to do good. St. Patrick's miracles included making an entire herd of swine appear for hungry people. This is very much like a food drive, only I would say probably a lot more exciting than collecting canned goods. More exciting and just as helpful. It fulfills the great commandment which Christ gave us to love one another and to show that love through acts of loving kindness. The people of this congregation have also shared with me your many experiences of being blessed when you experience God's presence in nature. How when you walk outdoors and how when you even look back to those vacation photos of favorite outdoor times, you remember how you prayed in those places and how God's Spirit was especially present. This is also something re I remember as I read this story and how when St. Patrick was uh, taken as a slave in Ireland, he turned to his faith for solace and he also found renewal in being outdoors. Now, today's stories really helped us to interpret our biblical readings today about forgiveness. As Christians, we are to be forgiving. We are to be moving on the path of discipleship to become perfected in love. As we consider the stories of St. Patrick that I've shared today, it made me think, if there are some ways of celebrating St. Patrick's Day that might be in line and in tune with some of the lessons that we have looked at today. I'm gonna to end by suggesting a few of these and wondering if you might celebrate the St. Patrick's Day weekend with one or more of some of these suggestions. Perhaps you would like to host a substance-free gathering for friends to give you an opportunity to form relationships and talk with people. As I have talked with many people who are uh, working through a 12-step recovery process, they talk about how certain times of the year can be very difficult. And St. Patrick's Day is one of the days they mention. They long for Christian companionship, and companionship where they won't be tempted to go back to using the substance with which they found such great difficulty and addiction. So perhaps in celebration of St. Patrick's Day, you would like to host one of those delightful kind of substance-free social events. Or Maybe you would like to take a walk or a hike outdoors, or even just get out the photo albums from one of your beautiful natural vacations and contemplate 
the awe and wonder you feel for the Creator God who breathed life into all of the natural world surrounding us. This might also be a way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Take a hike, enjoy the beauty which surrounds you, and give thanks to God. Say a huge thank you prayer for the world which surrounds us. Perhaps as you're praying, you might also want to celebrate St. Patrick's Day by doing the very difficult discipleship work of forgiving an enemy and even showing loving kindness to an enemy. This is difficult, but rewarding. Or finally, perhaps a good St. Patrick's Day outing might be shopping for the food drive or signing up to pack food at Feed My Starving Children with our congregation. We remember the story of St. Patrick causing a herd of swine to appear for hungry people. And we remember the great commandment Christ gave us, teaching us to love one another. This is one small thing that we can do to share what we have, just as the early disciples and apostles did, in order that all might have enough. As you do celebrate St. Patrick's Day this weekend, I pray that your hearts would be filled with God's love and forgiveness. And may God be with you as you celebrate. Amen. Let us conclude our time in prayer by praying together the prayer of St. Patrick. Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ behind us. Christ in us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us. Christ on our right, Christ on our left. Christ where we lie, Christ where we sit, Christ where we arise. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of us. Christ in every eye that sees us. Christ in every ear that hears us. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Christ. May your salvation, O Lord, be ever with us. Amen. Thank you.